Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. The video you should have had yesterday was an unboxing video. I can't do an unboxing video if the box doesn't arrive, can I? I got a message near five o'clock saying that there would be a delay. Uh, however, in the morning it had said it's out for delivery and will be there between half past three and half past five. And at quarter to five they've said there's been a delay. Now, it could be the vehicle broke. There's all sorts of reasons that it could be. But don't worry, we will deliver the next working day. That's today. And I still haven't had my package. But then it's only two o'clock. I didn't get an email telling me when it would be delivered yet. All a trifle worrying, but um, we just sit and wait. So what I plan to do then is if the box turns up today, which it should do, I'll film the unboxing thing and post it first thing tomorrow. So that'll be tomorrow's video. I'm out all day tomorrow. I'm going to this um, Orchid Society of Great Britain's meeting and auction. So it's um, something, uh, something I haven't been to before. I joined to get the magazine because the magazine is well worth it. Uh, but basically the, they've changed the venue, the venue's now closer to home. It's not close, it's closer. And I'm picking Lynn up on the way, so the two of us will go and have a day at um, Orchid Society of Great Britain, see what goes on. It's a new members meeting in the morning with a, um, some hands-on potting sort of stuff. <laughs> You know, shop bought phalaenopsis, no doubt, <laughs> which we're not joining in with. Uh, but yeah, it's just a sort of uh, meet and greet and stuff like that. And then the auction in the afternoon. And Lynn said there's normally some pretty good plants there, so I might come home with something. Not no guarantees, but um, I will have some mo money in my pocket. <laughs> so if there is anything I fancy, I'll uh, see what I can do. Um, so that's that. Um, this morning I got round to rearranging the racks. So basically what we've got here is lower light stuff. That's the twinkles, um, various dendrobiums, there's a couple of black hair types, some Latoria types, my little Masdevallia, um, the two are they both here? Well, one of them is. I was going to say, my Shady Arengus. Yeah, they're both here. Um, there's the Fastuosa here. And the um, the other little one, which actually got a spike. It's got buds on. Um, that's the one with the long name. <laughs> which, it, no, it hasn't got a tag yet. But if you look round, you'll see... That, whoops. Kick the fan, why don't you? You'll see little splashes of colour. You'll see little bits of yellow here and there. Yellow is Oncidium types, and there's bits of red. Red is Cattleya types, and in amongst them is some blue, which is Dendrobiums. <laughs> and then the other colour that I've got left is green, and that's going to be for everything else. Because if you add up the everything else, there'll be the odd things. Um, so yeah, I've sort of done the colours basically. And some labels have been done, some haven't. Some I've done and I haven't actually put out yet. Um, there are quite a few of them were mounts and obviously they've got to be tied on, which is a bit fiddly. Anyway, so back to here. So this is the shadier stuff, the stuff that doesn't need high light. That that needs a little bit higher light is at the top. So that's the twinkles and oncidium types. And then gradually, you know, they become more shaded as you go lower down. And then round the front of this one is the dendrobiums that I want to fall into thinking this is their summer light. So Jenkins eyes here, um, oh, Lindley eyes here, my Herco Glossoms here. Um, there's a couple of Oncidiums thrown in there as well. So that's the sort of next level of light. They're facing the brighter side of the grow room, but they won't ever get that sun through the roof. So that's that set. And then over here, we've got the rack that does actually get the sun through the roof, but there is still a back to it that faces away. 
and again this has got dendrobiums that I want a lower light level for so it's my long cane ones things like Nesta, Anosmum, um, Primulinum, things like that. Um, my Lodigesii Kikis that just seem to be dying for whatever reason. <laughs> I think it might be easier to just get a new plant quite honestly. Um, yeah so that and then round here are the highlight orchids so this is the um, Cattleya types, um, the Brassavola types or things with Brassavola in them are right on the top row and then my Tolumnias around here as well. So uh, that's what I've done um, and they'll do like that for now. Um, so th th that's the arrangement and um, the way the light's going you can see the shadow now if I point the camera upwards you see that shadow there that goes in a curve like that because that's next door's house's shadow is that bit my house's shadow is that bit that line used to be here so and right across so already it's moved that much so that's that much less roof is getting the sun on it which generates some heat yeah I mean if you think about it the sun's not out permanently it's out on and off and my two gauges one says 24.7 the other says 23.7 it's somewhere in between <laughs> so it's around 24 degrees in here which is more than comfortable everybody's happy so that's uh, yeah pleased with that um, everything in a pot has had a feed with the new feed the mounts today got sprayed with a slightly different feed so instead of the 120 parts per million of kalite which I know comes out at 5.8 naturally without any fiddling um, it was I did a, a 110 of kalite and I added in 20 parts per million of my normal MSU so that would have taken the um, the P and the K value up a little bit probably no more than from one to two but just that little bit so I'm still a little bit dubious about running it with um, such low values so every now and again I will I will do that so the the new feeding program is up and running um, and we'll see how it goes as I said, the mounts are only getting sprayed at the moment. I don't ever take them down and actually manually water them anymore. It's, too, it's because the frequency is high. And as the temperatures start to drop and the day lengths drop, growth will slow right down and everything. They won't need doing every day. You know, I mean, eventually we'll end up every third or fourth day as we go into winter. So, um, but I have noticed bugs getting about through lack of handling of the plants. And I still haven't done my smoke bombs for the flipping spiders. Although it's mainly for the spiders, at the end of the day, it will probably whack the um, any mealy bugs that are around and any of the um, mobile scale that are around. I mean, it's a penetrating smoke that kills whatever it gets at. So it should wipe everything out <laughs> for the time being. Um, the problem is, is when I, when I do it, it's got to be left for some considerable time and I, I've still got no guarantee that these doors are going to be airtight. I mean, you can see I've got cables coming in, so everything will have to be unplugged. So I can't do, do it during the day, it'll have to be at night. And then the door can be shut tight and hopefully it's airtight. But what I planned on doing is after the last time the cats have gone out in the evening, so not long before I go to bed, I'll sort of set it up ready to go, shut this door around tight and um, light the two smoke bombs and go out that door and go round and come in the front door and then come into the lounge and see if there's any leakage. And if there's any leakage, I'll shoo the cats out of the lounge if they're in there and shut the lounge door as well. So that if the little bit of leakage that there might be stays in the lounge. And then come the morning when I get my lazy whatnot out of bed, again, I can go out the front door and come round here, take a deep breath, open that, open that, turn that on 
and turn that on and vacate the premises <laughs> and then give it an hour or so to clear the air and change the air and everything like that because um, obviously I don't, I, don't, I don't want to be breathing it in and nor do the cats. So uh, that's the plan. When, I don't know. Um, at first I thought I could do it tomorrow during the day because I'm out all day. So the cats can't come through or anything, but it means they can't go out at all all day long. Because obviously when I get home, I'd have to then clear the air and everything, along with trying to get something to eat. And, you know, so I think it'll be better to just do it overnight. Um, it's just more practical. I mean, I used them in the other place a couple of times, and that's what I did there. Um, but there I had an inlet and an extractor fan so I could actually change the air quite quickly. Here I'm going to have to blow it out the door with the um, fans drawing the new air in through the window so I'll create like a, a circle of um, air. They're both oscillating fans so they'll get into all the corners and clear the air and um, hopefully it'll do the job. As I said I can go round um, you know, go around with the cobwebs, there's one in that corner, there's one in there. Along there, yes, yes, yes big, yes, in that corner, I can see the spider in that corner. And one part way up the gantry thing, another one in there, yeah, and all along up here. And all over the plants, which is the thing that's more worrying because those little spiderlings that are all over the plants because there's obviously been a hatch out um, they're going to get bigger as time goes on well they're not <laughs> but they would do if I left them alone and there's a lot of them many plants have got webs and little spiders on them okay they're harmless now but when they get big they're not not so harmless and I don't want them in here and also with the gap in the door I don't want them in the house. <laughs> it's more important. Uh, anyway, so that's that. And um, I've sorted out the racks. I'm much more happy with the position of things now for the rest of the season. And um, the new feeding program's up and running. Oh, some buds you won't have seen. That's a little Miltonia. Um, it's got to open in the not too distant future. I keep forgetting to show that. And wherever it is, don't ask me where, the Miltonia Sunset's got a spike as well. So that's going to bloom. And we've got the spikes here on this um, species Oncidium. There's two spikes there. So there's a little bit to come here. My Pabstia, the um, challenge plant, its latest growth has its spike coming alongside. So that's going to bloom again. It's got buds on. This is all good stuff. And just looking round today, there's stuff growing that wasn't. You know, it snuck up on me. You know, like over here. You know, lovely strong new growth here. Um, this one with the buds. Um, this dendrobium with the droopy canes. I mean, look at these two. Yeah? And then here, there's a new growth here. You know, that wasn't growing before. So there's stuff coming on. There's stuff coming into growth, which is, is, is pleasing to see. Um, oh, I can't get at that without moving all the racks again. But things like my, um, give it a kick, my um, Lindley eye. I mean, look, lovely strong new growths coming on here, up around the back as well. So, yeah, some good new growths there. Um, the Jenkins eye has got quite a few new growths. They're not so easy to identify now because they've had long enough for the leaves to start changing colour. But look at all the new root activity. You know, there's stuff going on, and some good stuff going on. And there's some stuff that's not doing much that flipping well should be. <laughs> uh, I mean, this, this one's got a nice new growth coming on it. Hopefully that will push on. So, yeah, I mean, this, this one's got its two new canes. This seems It's two plants, and it grows two canes a year. But these big fat canes are last year's. That's next year's blooms, and that is mealybugs. And spider webs. We need to get those smoke bombs fired. So, uh, yeah, so um, we did get blooms on this, and that's this year's canes that hopefully will be able to grow as big as this. But that's the bit I'm a bit worried about. Yeah, look at the little tykes. 
We need to get the uh, smoke going because I haven't got time to go around here every single individual plant. Nuisances. It's difficult to tell. If you think I've never had mealy bugs and now I have. So you have to sort of think why? why? Well, it's obvious why, isn't it? This place gets open to the outside world. I open the door frequently and occasionally I open the door and the window to cool it down in here. That's the outside world and that's where they come from and they're in. And once they get going they can really take off. <laughs> I mean there's another one look, I mean a lovely strong growth on this plant. Lovely new growth and behind it on that one two nice strong new growths. So there's lots of, lots of stuff doing, doing some good things. And we've got one of my species, Miltoniopsis, has got buds as well. That's Miltoniopsis uh, vexillaria. That one has lovely large um, mid-pink sort of blooms, that does. Um, yeah, so there's all sorts of things. You know, I mean, you know, it's, it's good stuff. There's stuff going on. And there's cattleyas that have done nothing for ages that have come back into growth. And that's got nothing to do with the new feed, because <laughs> they, they haven't been having that long enough to do any good yet. But um, yeah, there's, you know, down here we've got lovely strong new growths coming on. So there's, there's some good stuff going on. We've got the, the big Miltonias, um, they, their buds are starting to show now. Not colour, but they are starting to show, so we're going to get some good blooms over in this area, despite having too much light. <laughs> Yeah. Well, next year we'll deal with that, you know, and as I said, it, this was an experiment this year to find out what light levels there were and what, where the bright areas were, where the slightly duller areas were, because there's no real deep shade areas unless I create them, because the light's just so bright in here. So over here I've created a shady area by putting stuff on the top shelf and putting this rack in front of it. The light comes from up there. It doesn't get there, so that is a shady area. And we've got two shady shelves there. Yeah, and another one here. Not quite so shady here. Um, but yeah, so different light areas. And then we've got these enormous new growths on this shari baby. And there isn't a jot of a sign of a spike on the flipping things yet. <laughs> Size of that bulb. But no, you know, no sign of spikes yet. This one, this funny one here, this has got two nice new growths. No new growths on my um, Victoria Regina. The closest I've got to a new growth is this Kiki here, which is very near the base of the plant. It's near enough that the roots are going to get in the pot. However, this Kiki has got virtually no roots and has grown so big now that it's starting to become deciduous. <laughs> so that's doing strange things. I mean this one with the blooms on you get distracted by the blooms but look at the new growth coming up behind. So stuff's doing okay. We're okay. And as I said if the box turns up today, if it doesn't turn up today I'm going to be very cross because it's Hermes as usual. Um, the DHL is it? The other one? The other main courier? They seem to be doing a lot better more recently. You know, they don't seem to have so many muck-ups and, you know, drivers seem to work out that if you ring the bell somebody might come and get the parcel from you. If you put it on the pavement and run, they won't. Um, but Hermes have always been the worst of the lot. They are terrible. And they've, they've, they've changed their trading name to, I think it's Every or something. <laughs> What's that? Every time it fails. <laughs> But anyway, um, if the parcel turns up, I'll do what I said. I'll do the unboxing video and use that as tomorrow's. Um, they still de they, they deliver seven days a week, so it could still turn up. Because my worry initially was, well, if I don't get it today, then it's going to sit in a depot all weekend and I won't get it till Monday. But they do actually deliver on, they do deliver seven days a week. I'd like to know what went wrong, but I'll probably never know. I'll never know. <laughs> But let's hope it does turn up and they haven't lost it or damaged it badly enough that they don't deliver it or something like that. And we'll find out hopefully later today or whatever. 
And if there's anything at the um, OSGB meeting, because they have the show tables, you know, like at other orchid societies that I've been to in the past, um, I'll take the camera with me. There might be something worth filming. So I might get a, you know, short video from, from the meeting. Um, again, it's a new venue. It's a new set of people running it. So I'll have to ask if it's okay to film and they don't mind. I doubt if they will. <laughs> but you still have to ask and then um, yeah so I'll uh, see you in the next video as I said it should have been an unboxing video yesterday but we didn't get the box you can't unbox a non-box can you so uh, just imagine that's got you all wondering what's in it though hasn't it <laughs> well I'll let you into half the secret it is a new orchid and it's not a brand new orchid it's a replacement orchid um, you get five Roger Brownie points for guessing which one, which you won't. <laughs> so those points are safe. See you next time. Bye for now.